A great day for football in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The 1AA championship game. Youngstown State, the Penguins, against Georgia Southern. The Eagles and the Penguins both at 12 and 2. Jim Tressel comes in in his 14th season. This is his sixth trip to the championship game. He's won four of five. Paul Johnson in his third season at Georgia Southern. Last year they played UMass for this championship and lost. They have been waiting for this day for a long time. Youngstown State, the team of the 90s. Four championships in the 90s. Georgia Southern, four championships. Three of those in the 80s. And we are underway. Betty Cunningham for Georgia Southern. Cunningham out to the 40. He's close to midfield. As if this Georgia Southern offense needed any help, Rod. Yeah, 47 yards on the return, and that's an example of what you're going to get from Georgia Southern, Rich. Speed and more speed. And Cunningham is not the fastest guy in that backfield. That man is a real key right there. That's Greg Hill. He's a senior quarterback. Those are his passing numbers. Important as well, his running numbers. This Georgia Southern team runs the triple option. And the man behind Hill is a real load. This is Hill himself. Across midfield, he'll pick up four yards. The Eagles average 428 yards a game on the ground. Andre Pe Adrian Peterson is their guy, the fullback, the belly back. He's averaging 175 yards per game. The wide receivers can get kind of lonely in this offense, but when they throw it to him, Chris Johnson and Dedrick Parham can break it. The offensive line very good. Mark Williams is an All-American at the right guard. Flags down. Hill's pitch is bobbled but caught, and there's Adrian Peterson with his first carry. The flag back at midfield. Art Bellows is our referee. This is an Atlantic 10 crew today. There's a marker on the field. And the offsides goes against Youngstown State. Yeah, I think they got Todd Blackwell offsides that time, number 95. Youngstown State's defense is good, but not a pressure team. Just 18 sacks this year. It's a 3-4 set, and the linebackers make a lot of tackles. Ian Dominelli and Tim Johnson combined for 432. The secondary, the man at the top of this, uh, the list, Dwight Smiley, he belongs there. He is an NFL prospect. Georgia Southern declines the penalty, first down. <laughs> From the Youngstown 41, Hill will keep it. He's to the 37-yard line. Down to the sidelines, Don McPherson. Donnie? Hey, Rich, Georgia Southern running back Adrian Peterson is about 75% on a turf toe that he suffered last week. I talked to the coaches. I talked to a representative from Georgia Southern who said they've been icing it down all week. He's been on crutches most of the week and did not practice. He's about 75%. They said they, they don't think he can break the long ones, but he'll be effective on, in the middle. So at 75%, he should run for about 180 yards instead of 216 again, which he's done in the playoffs. But his numbers are just incredible. It's like high school numbers when you look at him. He's the belly back of the triple option, and he's down to the 33-yard line. Rod, tell me about the triple option, and, and what will we see from Georgia Southern today? Well, you're going to see a lot of Adrian Peterson. I mean, triple option is what you're used to seeing from the old days, Oklahoma and Nebraska, when they ran it. First option, dive back, then the quarterback on the outside, and then the pitch. There's your triple option. But that man is special. He won the Walter Payton Award as the outstanding player in Division I AA. He's run for almost 2,500 yards this season. It's incredible. He is a sophomore. He has never played a collegiate game in which he has not rushed for 100 yards. 29 consecutive 100-yard games. Third down now and two. And it's Peterson to the 30, and he's got the first down. And Hawthorne. Flag down. And Tim It'll be another third down. Paul Johnson loves this offense. He ran it as the offensive coordinator at Navy and was very successful. 
He ran it as the offensive coordinator at Hawaii. And he returned to Georgia Southern, where he started his coaching career as an assistant. And you got to have a good quarterback to run it, though. And Greg Hill is all of that. Hill will pitch it. This is Sherrod Freeman, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Dwight Smiley made the stop, 24 yards on the carry. Boy, we told you about the triple option, the first back being the guy that dive, you fake it, and now quarterback, Hill makes a decision. He's going to be attacked, so he pitches it outside, and Sherrod Freeman takes it down the field. Again, the speed for Georgia Southern is the key here. They get out to the perimeter, there's a big problem, and that man, Hill, is the trigger man for the offense. Peterson to the 14. You hear the words triple option, and the first thing you think about is a wishbone with three backs behind the quarterback. But that's not the offense that Georgia Southern runs. Guys like Sherrard Freeman and Benny Cunningham, as well as Adrian Peterson, will be in motion. They'll be all over the place. Okay, look, look at what this offense has done. 547 yards a game. And this is the kind of stuff you read about on high school teams, and you go, are they really that good? <laughs> we'll find out today. That clock has run down a couple times as Peterson is inside the 10. Well, as, as awesome as this offense is, Rod, were you surprised that Youngstown, who won the coin toss, chose defense first? Well, not really, because in big games, teams really like to get their defense out, get the emotion out of the way, and start pounding somewhat. Now, with this option team, they were probably hoping they'd get a stuff or get the ball put on the ground because of the emotional aspect of it, but Georgia Southern has done what they've done all season long, take the ball right down the field on you. Benny Cunningham's kickoff return, setting up this drive, which started at midfield. Hill, he stopped. Tim Johnson, the junior. Out of Fairfield, Alabama, made the stop. Yeah, that's a good play by Tim Johnson. He's going to have to do that. You want to make sure that Hill doesn't make a play on the outside. Watch Johnson come off the block, get to the outside, and there you go. He makes a good tackle on a very hard guy to tackle. Hill is very elusive. And Johnson made the big play of the season last week with an interception that got Youngstown State into this ballgame. Youngstown State was down by two scores to Florida A&M before that pick. Fourth down and four. The Eagles will go for it. And there's a look at the wishbone. And it looks like they were trying to draw Youngstown State offside. Because Hill calls the timeout. And the field goal unit is on their way out. We're underway in the 1AA championship from Chattanooga. Chris Chambers now lining up for a 25-yard field goal as Georgia Southern on the game's first drive stopped inside the Youngstown 10. Chambers has struggled this year, 6 of 15. But this one is true. Georgia Southern is on the board first in this 1AA championship game. The Eagles, 3-0. Bob Tucker, the defensive coordinator for Youngstown State. Georgia Southern is on the board first. A 3-0 lead over the Penguins. Here, it's not a bad start for the Youngstown State defense. You know, we're kind of talking about that over the break, how they got the stop. Remember, when you play an option team, you don't really get to practice against it very well in your practice. You don't run it at the same speed, so it's not surprising that Georgia Southern would come out and have some success early, but they didn't get a touchdown out of it. Youngstown coaches told us it might take a series or two before we're at least up to speed on this option. Nine yards for nine plays on 44 yards. Remember the kickoff return by Benny Cunningham which set it up. Andre Coleman for the eight. And Coleman is out to the 23 yard line. The starting lineups for Youngstown State. Jeff Ryan is their quarterback. Adrian Brown is a real good one. He is a bruising running back. And Brown will get it. The receivers for Jeff Ryan, and, and Ryan is an accurate quarterback. Elliot Giles has had a breakout year. 60 catches, eight touchdowns for the senior from Miami. On the offensive line, one change. The offensive guard, number 71, is Sean Bilker. He gets the start. 
Ian Shirey is a guy to watch because he's going up against Georgia Southern's best defensive player, Vaughn Allen. And there's a look at, at Jeff Ryan for the pride of Boardman, Ohio. Brown out to the 35. He's got a first down. Georgia Southern's defense is outstanding. Only 315 yards per game. Vaughn Allen, the nose tackle, tough to move at 290 pounds and six feet tall. He is a 1AA All American. The linebackers are good. Jason Neese is the leading tackler. He's just a sophomore. And the secondary, seniors on the corners with Thomas and Moreland, a junior in Ryan Hannon, Archie Thompson, the sophomore, free safety, has six picks. And there's a look at Vaughn Allen. Uh, he hasn't won the first two plays yet, but he's not going to have to get it going inside there for Georgia Southern. Brown again. Down below, Donnie McPherson. Donnie? Well, Richard, talking about the Georgia Southern, and Rod, you were talking about the Georgia Southern defense being so good. One of the reasons is, is that their offense is on the field for so long. It's like their punt game. They rarely use their punter because their offense is so dominant and chews up the clock so much. Defensive guys like that. You don't want to be on the field very much. Three and outs all you want, and your defense can do stuff like this. They only allow 15 points a game. Your offense really helps you out by keeping the ball. This is a Youngstown State offense that I think is you can categorize as a smash mouth offense. And that guy is the reason why. At six feet 230, he can rumble out to midfield. And another Penguin first down. Well, that time Ian Shire, the center up front, did a nice job against Vanselius Allen. He just really comes off the ball. Watch inside right in here. You're going to see the center do a nice job and a nice hole open up. 62 creates the lane. See that? He gets right in behind him. Great blocking job up front. If he blocks like that, they're going to run for about 300 yards. That's a nice job. Ian Shire, great job up front. He's going on against that big guy Allen you talked about, 290 pounds. Shire at 6'2", 270. Adrian Brown been the focal point on this drive and he'll get it again. Look at the hole this time and Brown is inside the 40. Rich, it's important to keep in mind the mentality right now of Youngstown State. I mean, they came into this ball game thinking they were physically stronger and bigger than Georgia Southern. And you're seeing that right now. They're coming right at them, powering away, pushing them out of the way, figuring that Georgia Southern is a team with speed. Right now, power is winning over speed. Adrian Brown is on this drive, 36 yards, five carries. Shirey and company up front. Providing the hole. Brown again. Look at him go. Head down to the 32-yard line. Eight yards on that pickup. So much was made coming into this game about the triple option in Georgia Southern's running game, but Youngstown State's is pretty good as well. Watch the fullback there, Rich. We talk about power. Watch it. Bam, right there. Nice, good block on the defensive end. That's your fullback, Jerry Johnson, getting up there at 210 pounds, blocking a defensive end. This thing is working for Youngstown State. It is smash mouth. It is power. There's nothing fancy about this. But second down and short. This time the fullback gets his first touch. Jerry Johnson, the sophomore. Jason Neese made the stop for Georgia Southern. Four yards and a first down. Rich, let me tell you that when you're a defense and you rely on speed and an offense comes out and pounds you like that, it really does put you on your heels. You don't want to get in there and slug out with the folks. You want to run around. And right now, you got to feel like if you're Georgia Southern, I, I've been there, you're on your heels a little bit. You want to make sure that you can stop this thing so you can get back to flying around. Right now, they're in a boxing match and they're getting pounded. First and 10, he may Akpon. His first carry. With Brown out of the game, he's down to the 28. It's a gain of maybe one. Akpon, a freshman out of Detroit. And now you see some blocking out there. And, and if you're Kawaki Thomas, number two, you understand that you can't let Giles get in front of you and block you. You have to dominate that spot and take control of it. You never want a receiver to get in front of you and keep you from a play. So you're going to see a lot of fighting going out there between the corners and the receivers like Giles. And you see his numbers, three, two and a half yards a catch. And it looks like 
an offensive lineman down for Youngstown State. Here's a look. Frank Rutherford is the player. Well, there you see him pulling, getting into the hole. And he gets rolled on by the folks behind him. He's all right. A tough guy. This is a tough team. Well, the receivers are tough. You know, when the receivers come out and start blocking the corners like that, you know they're tough. That guy believes in tough football. Jim Tressel has come four national championships. The last one in 97. Jeff Ryan chose to come to Youngstown because he wanted rings. And he'll put it up. Ryan, man open, caught at the one yard line. Renault Ray. 28 yards on the completion. First and goal for Youngstown State. Well, remember, they were fighting out there. At least one of the other receivers, Giles, was, fight, was fighting with Kawaki Thomas. Thomas falls down on the play. He gets beaten, and he's going to try and take Ray down. You see him top of the screen right there. There's that matchup. He falls down, and he tries to pull him down with him. He can't do it. They get the big play. That's all set up by the smash mouth football. Running the ball, play action pass, set up that big play. Youngstown's offense really has clicked in the playoff. Especially through the air. Adrian Brown is back in behind Johnson. Fumble. Ryan got back into the pile. Whose is it? Youngstown State will hold on to it. And Jeff Ryan got back in there and recovered the fumble. Could you feel all the Youngstown State fans holding their breath, thinking a great drive had just come apart, and it looks like Ryan just lost the ball. And the snap looked like it came up cleanly, and he just tried to pull out it too quickly and lost the ball. Eight times on the ground, almost exclusively with Adrian Brown. And that one pass was set up by that hard running inside. Brown will get it. And Brown will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Youngstown State. And give all the props and the glory to Adrian Brown for getting the touchdown. But Jerry Johnson, the fullback, we showed you earlier his blocking once again, leads Brown into the end zone. Mark Griffith on for the extra point. So impressive drives by both offenses in their first possession. The punter, Anthony Razzo, the hold, and Griffith adds the point. What a drive for Adrian Brown and the Youngstown State Penguins as they run through Georgia. 7-3, Youngstown State. Youngstown State impressively on the board. 7-3, they answer Georgia Southern. Rich Waltz along with Rod Gilmore. No surprise that either team kept it on the ground and had success. No, there was an undercurrent to this game that Youngstown State was going to be real physical. They felt real good about themselves, that they could dominate that first drive. You saw a lot of that man and a dominating physical presence by Youngstown State. Jim Tressel all week long heard about Georgia Southern's vaunted offense averaging close to 500 yards a game on the ground. Well, let me ask you this. Georgia Southern from the Southern Conference Youngstown State from the Gateway. Is there some conference superiority issue here. Well the Gateway had a great year. They put three teams in the playoffs. And Youngstown State feels that they are a very physical football team. But few people have been able to stop Georgia Southern this year. Cunningham is out to the 27-yard line. First and 10 now, Georgia Southern. Last drive for Youngstown State. Yeah, Georgia Southern defense premised on speed. So what do you do? Go right at him. A 235-pound tailback pounding away inside, knocking everybody back on their heels. Brown, Brown, 
and more Brown, and then a big pass to Ray to set up the touchdown that Brown got at the end. There it is right there, behind a good block by Jerry Johnson, his fullback. You'll get arguments, I think, from the Southern Conference as well. They put three teams in the playoffs. Georgia Southern has won that conference three consecutive times. Hill. And Hill has got a lane. He's just tripped up. Oh, this is classic. I mean, it's brute force against speed. It's triple option. Get me to the outside. Let Hill make a play. And Hill's trying to redeem himself from last year when he didn't have a great ball game here. He wants to do it today outside and then in, in the alley. Had a chance to pitch it, but made the play himself. And then Dominelli on the tackle. He is the first player in one double A to go over 3,000 on the ground and in the air. Down he goes. He'll lose a yard. Let's go down below. Don McPherson. Hey, Donnie. Rich, during that last time off the field, the Youngstown defensive coaches were telling their secondary people to watch out for the blocking by the slot backs for Georgia Southern. That's where they get a lot of their yards in the secondary. Those guys who come out of that broken bone set go downfield and block the secondary people. They told the guys, watch out for the cutting. That's a great point, Donnie. The way you get cut on the perimeter sets up the big plays for the option offense. Hill. The pitch almost fumbled. Benny Cunningham is out to the 43 yard line. 16 yards. It's been a busy day for Cunningham so far. First down, Georgia Southern. Let's watch that point Donnie Mack was talking about. Watch once Hill gets to the outside and the good block, and you're going to see the perimeter right there, outside, right there. There you have a slot back taken out of corner so Hill can get up the field and make more yards, 10 more yards because of the blocking on the perimeter. This time Hill gives it to Adrian Peterson. Matt Meckling made the stop. Peterson slowed with turf toe. In fact, Thursday here in Chattanooga, he got off the bus for media day on crutches. And everyone said, what the heck is going on? Well, that was probably a good sign. Because remember, when he had the flu a while back and played UMass, he ran for 333 yards. So I think that's not bad. Look what he did for his, uh, the season, 2,476 yards, uh, 37 touchdowns. This is Hill. And Hill, he can go. <laughs> Touchdown, Georgia Southern, 42 oh. yards. <laughs> I ask you, Mr. Waltz, do you like power or do you like speed? Pick your poison so far, Gray Hill. 22nd rushing touchdown for Hill. Chambers for the point. Greg Hill, the senior out of Sarasota. Not real big, 5'11", 163. But he can run the option, and he can fly. And watch the linebackers inside, 36. Dominelli gets tied up, and he can't get to the quarterback. You see the way he gets pushed out? Johnson, 45, overruns it, and then it's just natural ability and instincts from Hill, the great cutback there. But the key, the way they got the inside linebackers knocked off there, once again, here you see the center getting a good job, Belgraf getting inside on the inside linebackers, and that opened up that inside for Hill. Great job. Hill's 42-yard run finished a five-play drive. Chambers the kick. Andre Coleman from the 12. Coleman to the 27 yard line. And the Penguins will have it first and 10. Neither defense has made a stop yet. 
No, but if you're Georgia Southern right now, you're thinking, okay, I've got two good corners who know how to play man-to-man. -man. I might bring one more safety down into the box and really try to let my corners take away the pass. And that, you got to do something to start taking away the power running game inside. And I think you got to get that eighth man in the box to give you some help here. A two tight end look from Youngstown. Ryan. A nice catch by Casey Bogard, the tight end. And Bogard is across the 40, close to midfield. And out of bounds he goes. Well, how about the composure of Jeff Lyons? What do we got here? Lots of pushing, lots of bodies, but no flag. Ryan's only a sophomore, keeps his composure, gets the ball out of there when he's really being harassed very hard by Jamar Jones. Still, he gets the ball out there. Nice catch by Bogart. 17 yards on the pickup. Yeah, but Ryan made that play. He kept his composure when he was under pressure right away. Lots of time for Ryan to the sidelines. It is caught. How about that? At the 45-yard line. Elliot Giles. Now you see Kawaki Thomas is a very good corner and he's got pretty good position but he starts looking back into the backfield and loses his his cushion on his guy. If he doesn't look in the backfield so much he can make a play but Giles ran him off to the outside. Giles trying to get that toe down on his way out of bounds. I, I tell you one thing these corners are pretty good at Georgia Southern. They can play man to man. I think you have to turn them loose and let them play. There you see Moreland coming up and he's playing man to man at the bottom of the screen. Brown. Brown is loose. Adrian Brown rumbles down to the 12 yard line. Oh man, they're putting on a clinic right now with the power football inside. And when you don't have people playing zone behind you and man to man, once you get past the line of scrimmage, it's all open. And it's all good for them right now because they used the power inside, eight men in the box, didn't matter. They're still knocking them out of the way. Archie Thomas Thompson makes a tackle late. But Rich, you see that inside? They're destroying them at the point of attack. Eight men in the box, doesn't matter. That big guy is running over them. Brown is already at 79 yards. I thought the other Adrian was the guy who was supposed to have all the yards by now. It's too bad Adrian Karsten's not here today. We've got Adrian <laughs> Peterson, the great runner for Georgia Southern, and Adrian Brown. We'd get an Adrian trifecta, huh? We would. When Elliot Giles made that great catch, he landed on the first down marker, and he's apparently put it out of commission. Let's go down below Don McPherson. Donnie? Ten seven Georgia Southern Donnie Mack apparently getting treatment as well down below <laughs> that the the right knee of Frank Rutherford hyper extended they expect him to return oh, he's a tough guy yeah one of those tough linemen hyper extended knee doesn't keep you out of the ball game if you can walk on it you can go out there and block he'll be back he wants back in because this offensive line is doing a great job. To the five yard line. Michael Ward made the stop for Georgia Southern. Well, there's no break for the Georgia Southern defense. Ogbon comes in, he's 225 pounds as a redshirt freshman. You take out the 235 pounder, and they come back and they pound you again with somebody else. That's not fair. This is a blue collar team in Youngstown State, and they've shown it throughout the year. That's keeping with Youngstown, isn't it? Yeah. Play, right? yeah. And, and Jim Trestle's team has come from behind. They have not been pretty, but they find themselves in the championship game. And they're on the move again. John Shoemaker in motion. Adrian Brown to the four-yard line, close to the first down. Michael Ward 
The red shirt freshman out of Savannah made the stop for the Eagles. And Rich, I love the game plan that John Klasik, the offensive coordinator, has. Notice they haven't really gone outside. They really haven't tried to get to the perimeter because that's the strength of the Georgia Southern defense. Speed. He's put them in a narrow, defined area and said, we're going to slug it out with you. We'll see how long you can take it. And so far, Georgia Southern hasn't been able to step up to it. They mark it just inside the five. Ryan on the option is close to the first down. Or rather, it was Johnson, the first man through. Eugene Phillips made the stop. This is about the best push we've seen from Georgia Southern's defense so far. They actually stuff this thing at the line of scrimmage. You see right there, they create a pile up at the, at the point of attack. Johnson has no place to go because of the good play up front by Eugene Phillips, 91. The mark is at the four. He needed to get to the three. And the first quarter is in the books. Youngstown State down three. Fourth down, the Penguins have driven inside the five-yard line of Georgia Southern, and Jim Tressel is going for it. Yeah, I take the points. I and mean, Georgia Southern just made a play defensively. They have a little momentum. Take your points. You're, you're going to get back down here anyway. Yeah, keep coming back at them. Don't give them any chance to think they can get back in the ball game because they get a stop here. That's just my view. What do I know? I'd go for it. Of course you would. <laughs> I'd give it to Eric Gambler. I'd give it to Adrian <laughs> Brown. And it's Brown on the carry, and Brown, boy, very close. Michael Ward, Arky Thompson, the stop for Georgia Southern. Yeah, and you know something? If I'm Georgia Southern, even if that's a first down, I feel pretty good about my defense right now because for two straight plays, they've hung in there and played tough. And they're coordinated and get those guys on the sideline, even if they give up points and say, hey, guys, we're getting it going right now. We're standing in there fighting with these guys much better. And then you have momentum. That's why I wouldn't run that play there. I take the points and just give them another dagger. Not by much, but Youngstown State gets the first down. A little bit more sense of urgency by Georgia Southern. They get off blocks. There you see them stepping up inside. Haddon, 12, getting in there to help make the play, too. Great Arch low hit by Archie Thompson. Tremendous. Running. Running. So it's first and goal. 70 yards on seven plays. We're not going to see any plays today, are we? All but one of those plays on the ground. And Ryan will keep it. He stretches. He's in. Touchdown, Youngstown State. Jeff Ryan and Jim Tressel's Youngstown State Penguins are right back on top. Not a surprise to see Ryan with the football. He's the second leading rusher on this team with almost 650 yards. They run a little bit of option, and they run it a lot down inside the 15, 20-yard line. Mark Griffin to add the point. We may not see a punt all day long. We won't see it this game. Griffin adds the point. Youngstown State answers. And the Penguins reclaim the lead. They stretch it to 14-10. Jim Tressel definitely knows his way to Chattanooga. And Youngstown State, touchdown drives on both possessions. Georgia Southern on both of their possessions have scored. An opening field goal and then a long touchdown run by their quarterback, Greg Hill. First quarter, 90 yards on the ground. I told you Georgia Southern's defense is not used to giving up yardage. They're not used to facing a team that comes right at you like this either. The Youngstown State doesn't care about the numbers. They said, prove it to us. Show us you can stand in there and fight with us. Haven't done it yet. Cunningham. Then he holds on to this one. Flags go down at the 20-yard line. Cunningham down at the 21-yard line. Art Bellows with the call. It'll back Georgia Southern up.
Greg Hill. A lot of time. And he gets outside to the 18-yard line. This guy can really pick him up and put him down. Hill had his touchdown run. A 42-yard run for the first touchdown for Georgia Southern. Unfortunately for him last year, he put it down a couple times on the ground. Two fumbles in the championship game and one interception. He vowed that he would do whatever it took to get back this year and win the game. A lot of pressure on himself, but he's come through so far. Seven turnovers as a team in that championship loss to UMass. And here's Peterson to the 25. Rod, do you think his toe is bothering him from what you've seen on film and to what you've seen today? Well, it's hard to tell right now. I mean, they've been pounding inside with him. He doesn't really work to the outside very often. You see him slip and slide to the outside sometimes, but they really haven't tried to get him on any of the counter options yet or any of the speed options. So I don't think that it's a factor yet. They're being cautious with him now. On first and 10, the pitch, Cunningham. And Benny is down to the 35 yard line close to a first down Bruce Hightower Dwight Smiley made the stop it is a first down the option comes at you and they cut you right on the outside you hate these blockers coming out low on you and then the quarterback behind you don't know who has the ball it's a tough thing about it you see them getting the blocks down the field you don't know who has the ball that's a tough thing you have to simply trust in your assignment and take your guy and not worry about where the football is They have yet to put it in the air. And Peterson busts into the backfield across the 45. 12 yards and another first down. Now, Rich, that was the first run where I thought his toe was a bit of an issue. I and mean, when watching him on film, we would see him run that play and then make a sharp cut, get himself to the outside and break a tackle. That time he ran straight along that path. He didn't try to make any moves. And that's where I think he didn't have the confidence that he could cut off that toe. Peterson that time he's put down on a good hard hit by Kawanza Swan the senior linebacker out of Miami he is the emotional leader of this Youngstown defense yeah, and you watch division one double-a players and you say do they have NFL potential well, watch this play by Swan watch him step up with a big hit right there yeah people like that he is one of about four or five guys on this team that the NFL scouts are looking at Second and seven. Hill. A great play again by Kawanza Swan. Mark Myers, the ball carrier. Don McPherson down below. Donnie? Well, Rich, one thing about defending the option, it's called assignment football. Stay on your man. In this case, it's a trap option. The quarterback will go back the opposite direction. Everybody stays on their man. Here it is, man for man. That's how you stop option football. It's a disciplined defense. It's called assignment defense. Take one man and stay on him. Uh, not many people were as good as Donnie Mack is making you blow your assignments when he had the ball in his hands, huh, Rich? And don't forget, Don McPherson threw the ball in college as well. Absolutely. Threw it in the NFL, too. Hill on the run. Nice throw. Dedrick Parr on the catch. He completes 57% of his passes. That was his first attempt of the game. You're not going to see a lot of drop back passing from Hill. They're going to sprint him out. This comes off of the option game. Get him outside. And usually when you get him outside, he's got better vision. And no one is around him. Nice and easy lane to throw that football. Plenty of stuff. Good blocking outside by Parham as well. Hill on the pitch. Outside is Peterson. And Peterson is inside the 15. Down to the 14. Ian Dominelli made the stop. 21 yards. And this Georgia Southern offense is in gear. Well, you've seen a bit of an adjustment from them. They came out running the triple option. Now they've gone trap option some, opening things up a little bit. Here again, they come back outside trap option. And that's almost a forward pass to Peterson. Nice hands on him. He gets outside. And again, Rich, we don't see any moves from him outside. He's still running on a track, not changing directions at all. Straight ahead, Peterson to the six. Dwight Smiley made the stop. Gain of eight.
This is a tough day to be a defensive coordinator. Tough day to be a defensive player. I mean, you know, you're out there and these guys are running up and down the field. You don't feel too good about yourself. We're going to have a lot of points in this ball game. Peterson still fighting down inside the three. Did you see him at the end of that run? That's a little bit of Walter Payton. You know, that hit and spin, that relentlessness, that drive to keep it, trying to get the extra yards. That's why that guy won the Walter Payton Award as the top player in Division I AA. Rod, you talk about Walter Payton. That's what the Georgia Southern coaches said about Adrian Peterson. He gets up slow. Remember, this kid rushed for 333 yards with the flu. He knows how to play it hurt. A little left. Uh, Wishbone look, is he in? Yes, oh. touchdown! Adrian Peterson fights his way into the end zone. Well, that would have made Walter Payton very proud. And that, that man was stopped at about the two yard line. Two, one and a half, kept the legs moving, driving, spinning, and fighting to get into the end zone. He's only a sophomore. He's already, what, the career rushing leader at Georgia Southern? Or close to it. His numbers continue to grow. That's 38 touchdowns on the year. Just me, is that just an eye-popping stat that just seems ridiculous? It's, it's not just you. The point is good. We're getting a look at one of the great players in college football. You know, watch his numbers, and it's so dominating the way he does it. Reminds you of the way Jerry Rice dominated when he was in one double A. 17-14, Georgia Southern. This is an old-fashioned shootout, but it's on the ground. Andre Coleman at the five-yard line. And Coleman is out to the 22-yard line. Yeah, not much in the air, but the, the ground game has been exciting. Big plays. His last drive, Hill, little option. Getting it going with Cunningham outside. And then Hill with a pass completion, the only one that he threw. And then Peterson took over once they got inside the 40-yard line and finished it off with Vonsilius Allen, the big tackle inside, blocking, leading the way into the end zone with a tremendous effort by Peterson. 88 yards on 11 plays. How about Allen blocking 290 pound fullback last time? Brian Allen right back in nose tackle for Georgia Southern. That's a different kind of two-way player. I mean, you're used to seeing the wide receiver, defensive back, you know, Deion Sanders guy go both ways. But Allen at tackle, nose tackle, 290 pounds, and then lining up in the backfield as a fullback to lead Peterson into the end zone. There's a look at Montsellius, a 3.68 chemistry major, academic All-American, and he's already graduated. He's thinking about medical school. Ryan, lots of time, going deep for Ray, and he can't hold it. Earth, wind, Moreland on the coverage. Oh, dare I say it? He was a shining star on that coverage. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> we'll watch Allen inside. And he draws a double team, splits it, gets held there a little bit. Grab him around the ear hole. That's a little bit odd there. Didn't get flagged, but he got past Ian Cherie. Put pressure on the quarterback. But how about Moreland out there on that coverage? Third down conversions. Brentstown State all of one today. Shotgun for the first time from Ryan. He'll go deep, and he overthrows Jared Zwick. Uh, you're, you're not going to make a lot of money picking on these two corners. And both these guys are about 5'10", about 175 pounds. They both run in the 4'4 range. They're both NFL prospects. Pick your poison. You go left to Moreland, you come right to Thomas. Thomas, good coverage on Zwick. Watch him here. That is perfect. Classic. You can't play it any better than that. This is the first punt of the ball game. Anthony Razzo. Anthony Williams. To the 43-yard line. 36 yards on the kick. 
And let's see if Georgia Southern can do something after their first defensive stop of the ball game. 17-14, Eagles. Rich and Rod, from the sideline, Coach Tucker was telling his defensive players during the break that they're going to go to the double eagle, which means let's stop the dive in the middle that puts the linebackers and the secondary people on an island when trying to defend the option. So watch for them to stop the dive up the middle and get to that, those option guys in the perimeter. That's an adjustment that would be well called for, considering that Peterson's been killing them inside. Outside goes Hill. The pitch to Cunningham. Back to the chalkboard, you take away the dive, and the pitch can kill you. Double eagle that. Yeah. They have so many weapons. Peterson inside, Hill outside, and then on the pitch, Cunningham. That didn't take long. Speed hits in a hurry. Yes. Chris Chambers for the extra point. Georgia Southern is showing why they are one of the most productive running teams, not in the NCAA this year, but almost of all time. They, their numbers are just incredible. But when you make the adjustment, you know, the numbers are going to be huge like that. But you go double eagle like that, you put the pressure on your inside guys. The safeties have to come from inside out to make the play. That's a long run because your corners aren't there to help. Your corners are playing man to man. So the safeties have to run inside to the quarterback and then to the pitch man. That's a long distance. They take false steps. Hill has the leverage on them. There's no way the linebackers and the safeties can get inside and catch up with somebody with Cunningham speed. Don, Don McPherson, you obviously ran the option very well. This is a well-oiled machine, this Georgia Southern offense. It really is a well-oiled machine, Rich, and one thing they do very well is blocking at the point of attack. In that case, the trap option, the quarterback starts one way, comes back the other way, it stalemates the defense for just a split second. If you look at the numbers of the speed in this backfield, they're 4-4 four, four, and 4-5 four, across the board. That split second gives those guys the perimeter. Once they get into the secondary, they're just too fast for that Youngstown State secondary. That's absolutely right. That false step that you take as a safety or a linebacker leaves you two or three yards behind the pitch man and the quarterback. And if he's running 4-4-4-5, four, 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 like Donnie Mack said, you can't catch that guy. Andre Coleman from the two. Andre Coleman spills out to the 34-yard line. Ace in the AFC West in his last game. Dennis Erickson. Very good. I wonder where that note came from. <laughs> Adrian Brown. Brown. Extra effort to the 38, and he was very close to breaking it for big yardage. Earth, Wind, Moreland made the stop. All right, come on, come on. Is, is that his real name? It is. His uh, his parents apparently liked the group Earth, Wind, and Fire, so they named him Earth, Wind, Moreland. He does not, however, have a sister named Tower of Power. Ooh. <laughs> Which would have been my choice. <laughs> That's the way of the world, Cap. He's from Atlanta. He's a senior. If you're not an Earth, Wind, and Fire fan, you just won't get those songs. Really. No, Jeff Ryan is out to the 45-yard line. Milwaukee Thomas ends that run, but it's a first down now for Youngstown State. But, you know, you got to figure if you're Moreland and you grew up with the name Earth, Wind, you don't get taunted by the kids saying, and fire. You know why? Because well, most of those kids never heard of Earth, Wind, and Fire. At Thanksgiving dinner table, all the relatives are going, oh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and naming songs and whatnot. But when he plays on the playground, the kids didn't know. That's a good point. <laughs> you have to think about these things. Ryan running out of time, and down he goes. Freddie Pescada, our right. true freshman. So can we have an I told you so here? Remember that fourth down play. 
when they went for it. They got it and they got the touchdown. But you saw Georgia Southern play tough for two or three plays. I said that would give the defense a lift. They got their lift. They started feeling like they could play with these guys. The offense has made a couple of plays. Now the defense is showing some confidence and they're getting to run around and show some speed. Is that my told you so? We'll chalk that one up. Okay. It's your first of hopefully many. Brian in trouble. He goes down again. Vaughn Allen and Pescada. Eugene Phillips was there. Well, you don't have to be a chemistry major to figure out that if you push your guy back inside, you're going to make a play. Watch Allen beat the double team there, gets through both guys. Cherie couldn't hold him off, and he makes the sack. That's a tremendous push by the big fella. Georgia Southern, 241 yards on the ground. Youngstown's attack a little more balanced, but right now they are faced with third down and a whole bunch. This, this is just crazy. You see that? 241 versus 94. Timeout on the field. Jim Trestle and the Penguins are down in the first 24 14. Jim Trestle on the left, Paul Johnson on the right. Two very successful head coaches in one double A football. And right now, Jim Trestle's got to look at that chart and find a third down and 26 play. Ryan. To the sidelines, it is caught at midfield, short of the first down. Renald Ray, a 20-yard pickup. Here's your quarterback here. He's going to try and drop the ball in over here, and this is a great job by Ryan. It's a zone coverage. It drops off, and now you'll see him drop it over the underneath coverage and in front of the deep coverage as you see Archie Thompson come over. That's a great throw by the young quarterback. Ronald Ray was still short of the first down. And so Anthony Razzo will kick it. It's a short one. Not a good kick. Williams at the 27 yard line. Adrian Peterson is taking care of things right now. And Peterson is all the way down to the 30. He's still on his feet. Peterson still on his feet. Peterson down. Did we say that he won the Walter Payton Award and that he would resemble sweetness? This is as close to sweetness as you're going to get on the college level, maybe even the pro level. Watch the tackles that he breaks, and then watch the determination at the end. He dishes out punishment there, keeps his balance, and now, even at the end when there's nothing left, he throws people out of the way for more yardage. 58 yards and he has electrified this crowd in Chattanooga. He'll get it again and I think he'll fall down to the 12 in exhaustion. David Vecchione made the stop. Flag down. That turf toe doesn't seem to be bothering him now. You know his brother Michael plays linebacker for the Colts. And I would venture to guess that Michael walks around the locker room bragging about his little brother to a lot of his teammates. But now he has the proof, the video to, to prove it. Absolutely. On the offense, 10-yard penalty was his first down. You figure Georgia Southern in their postseason rushing and Peterson look at this this is ridiculous and he's only a sophomore folks 1460 yards and you figure his brother Michael can walk up to Edgar and James and say hey you're not so tough my little brother can do what you do Hill Peterson gets it again he's 10 Peterson five about 
sums it up. Oh, man. A tremendous individual effort, but he'd be the first to tell you he got some great help from his teammates, particularly the wide receivers blocking down the field. Dedrick Parham doing a great job once again. Chris Chambers for the extra point. On that drive, Adrian Peterson ran over everyone except our Don McPherson. Donnie, that was something to watch. Oh, give me a piece of this. Watch this guy out here. You're going to see good blocking out there. 83 Parham, nice job, but watch him work there, Rich. And Donnie Mack, you got to love that. Great, great play by Peterson, but one of the things you have to credit is Greg Hill turning his back, linebacker coming fast, he gets it off. Great play by Hill to get it off to Peterson. And once again, this kid, you can't say anything more about the effort that this kid is putting in, especially with an injured toe. You're absolutely right, Donnie Mack. Quarterback Hill, great job. I love the blocking on the perimeter, though. I saw Parham out there doing a great job, took out a defensive back, which made it easier for Peterson to get the last seven yards, Rich, to get into the end zone. You know, the coaches were talking, the Youngstown State coaches were talking that they were going to give up a little bit of option early on and get a look at it. It's been just the opposite. It's had, it's been for Georgia Southern to get used to the power game of Youngstown State. They haven't figured out. They're still looking at the option. <laughs> you know, they're not stopping it. They're looking at it right now. <laughs> exactly right. They haven't figured it out. In this attack, how do you keep the ball out of his hands? Well, you know, you got to make a choice. And the choices they've made, they've had, there's been an answer for Georgia Southern. You heard them earlier go double eagle take away the dive they got the big play outside by Cunningham look at this 340 yards total for Georgia Southern and it happened in a hurry Andre Coleman and Coleman is swallowed up at the 22 yard line 517 left second quarter I'll leave that one alone <laughs> Jeff Ryan turns and gives it to Adrian Brown and the Georgia Southern defense, though not as spectacular as the offense, has played very well these last two series. Well, you know, you really have to be impressed with the defense of Georgia Southern. They've really turned things around, settled in. They're playing that physical style right now. But I expect that you're going to get a run from Youngstown State, Rich. Pretty soon, they're going to get back into the flow with Brown. And also, Ryan will open up a little bit more. This Youngstown State team, strangely enough, has almost played better when they've been behind this year. And they're behind right now and on the run. Ryan, he's across the 35, he's got a first down. Well, you know, you touched on it earlier about being behind and coming back, but we didn't really finish that one off. When they were playing last week in their ball game and they were down 24-13, yet they still managed to win that ball game. And Florida A&M had the ball on the Youngstown State four yard line, was going in for a score that would have ended it. But you mentioned the interception by Tim Johnson and then suddenly Jeff Ryan went six of nine three touchdowns and they came back and beat Florida A&M with 44 seconds left Ryan scrambling he'll go down again at the 30 Freddie Pescada made the stop well this is the same problem they had against Florida A&M you know, the sacks, the speed of the defense getting around the offensive line and harassing Ryan. He was sacked nine times, as you saw in that graphic. And now Georgia Southern is putting them in that same position where they can turn loose and use their speed. And that's a problem for Jim Trestle. He's got to get his team back into the ball game without giving up those sacks. Playing from behind has been something that Youngstown State has been able to do. You see the nine sacks against Florida A&M. And Jared Zwick is now in at quarterback. He'll run some option and he goes down. Jim Tressel taking Jeff Ryan out for a play and maybe more. As Zwick looks like he's hurt too. He comes in off the bench cold, runs the option and takes a lick and is holding that left wrist. Fonselius Allen really stepping up his game in the second quarter here. Defensive tackle. Let's watch the option to the right side. You'll see Allen show up. 99 right there. There's your big hit. It looks like you got him right on that wrist. Zwick is a better option quarterback than Ryan. 
And I think Jim Tressel wanted him in there just to run that option. And it didn't work. And I think Georgia Southern knew that he was likely to run the option as well. Dangerous time now for Ryan. These corners are really good. He can't just hang the ball up there. They'll pick it off. And they could be in trouble. All of three on third down. Ryan underneath. Out to the 38-yard line. A smart decision by Ryan. He had nothing deep down the field. He got the ball to his man right away. Denver Williams made the catch. Good field position move. Anthony Dorazzo with Anthony Williams deep. Williams. Anthony Williams. He will go. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. No flags. Two yards. And it's about speed. I'm not talking about the speed in the open field. I'm talking about the burst that he used when he had five guys around him. He didn't want power. He didn't want to juke. He used his speed to get himself away. And as much as Youngstown State talked about coming in and pounding, Georgia Southern talked to their guys about using their speed. And that was a great example of it. Youngstown State is in shock. So much so that they've called a timeout just to get the right personnel on for this kick. Well, speed can paralyze you, pal. Right now, the Eagles are soaring. Anthony Williams and Georgia Southern have raced to a 37-14 lead over Youngstown State. Chris Chambers with the extra point. 38-14. 72 yards, and he covered that in a hurry. Watch him on this. We talked about his speed. Watch how he outruns the tacklers in here, uses his speed, and you'll see it move, and then right now, freeze it. Right there, look at all the guys around him. He's got an angle, he's got an angle, he's got an angle. Ain't gonna happen. He just turns on the Jets, outruns everybody. That is speed, that's not using any moves. It's saying, I have the Jets, I'm gonna make it happen. 150-pound freshman. And you know, Georgia Southern, they are getting big plays from a lot of different places. Yeah, and when people run past you like that, it'll make you look like that. You'll be kind of bummed. Jim Tressel and Youngstown State have been down before, but being down against a running team and an offensive juggernaut like Georgia Southern is a whole different story. Well, and, and it's more than just that being down. It's because of the mental taxing that you take when you try to play against an option team. You have to stay mentally into every play. If you make a mistake, it's a home run. And so you can't let that happen. That's a tough thing about the position Youngstown State is in right now. Their defense, they can't take a play off anymore. Georgia Southern is the Mark McGuire of 1AA football. Andre Coleman. Coleman. And Coleman's loose. He falls down at the 38-yard line. 38 yards on the return. Two minutes left in this first half. Here you'll see the return, and they set up the wedge really nicely right there. Nice wedge, and he does a nice job of seeing the hole there and then trying to get inside of it. But once again, good speed by Georgia Southern. Moreland does a nice job of being right where he needs to be as a safety man on the return to shut it down. Third win, Moreland with the stop. And now, Youngstown State with two minutes left, trying to salvage something from this first half. Ryan. That won't get it done to the 42, Freddie Pescada. 
who has been all over Jeff Ryan, made the stop. Uh, this defense is really stepping it up. They're getting a chance to use their speed, and that's so important to them. They get confidence from that. At first couple of series we looked at, Rich, they were being pounded. They were in a nice little box, and they got pounded out of, out of that position. Now with the lead, look at the field is spread now. All these receivers out here. Speed can negate that. Five wide receivers. Ryan's throw is caught. Out to the 43-yard line. Denver Williams made the stop. Georgia Southern got it going in the second quarter with defense. A nice stuff right down here. Johnson couldn't get inside, and then they started putting pressure on Ryan. Allen inside. Allen once again beating a double team. That speed and that strength inside. Third down. Ryan's going to tuck it and pay the price. Short of the first down at the 47 yard line. If you're Jim Trestle, do you go for it here? Man. You know, with 39 seconds going, I'm not sure I'd want to take a chance on anything. I'd be I'd be happy to get into the locker room at this point and try to regroup. Well, he's not going to stop the clock. He's going to let the clock roll. And if you don't make it, though, with this option, one play could put them in position for a field goal. Play clock at five, so the clock will stop at about 13 seconds. And at that point, you're going to have to kick it. I would expect. Yeah, and here comes the punt unit. Yeah, he doesn't want them to have a chance of doing anything. You know, get to the locker room, try to regroup, try to figure out what you're going to do about this option. The dive has killed them. The quarterback on the perimeter has killed them. And the pitch has killed them. They haven't been able to take away anything. Well, I don't know if kicking to Anthony Williams is any picnic either. I bet they don't kick it to him. I mean, you better kick this one out of bounds, but don't kick it to Williams. He's showing you his wares. That will be pretty easy because Williams is not on the field right now. It looks like Georgia Southern isn't buying this. They're just going to put their defense on and let Razo kick it deep with no one back to receive it. They, they yeah, are still move. aware of the fake. Yeah. You know, Rich, when we talked to Paul Johnson earlier this week, he sounded supremely confident about his team and his offense. And we said, well, what happened to stop your offense from running and throw the ball? He went, well, nobody has stopped us. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. This one is going to roll dead, and the time is going to roll right off the clock. Very quiet on the Youngstown State sideline. 38-14, Georgia Southern on top. it up already on the Georgia Southern side of the field and here's why a 38 14 lead in the one double a championship game rich Waltz along with Rod Gilmore we heard Adrian Peterson was good but that first half was downright ridiculous oh, we, we saw the numbers we didn't believe that he could do this kind of thing boy did he in the first half he jumped out big time didn't he rich Adrian Peterson outside and this run is one of the best runs you'll see all season right now watch him get to the outside power speed now watch him throw people off of him 155 yards in the first half and just highlight after a highlight with the way he disregarded runners finished off runs and this one way may have been just the best one at the end right now watch him find his way into the end zone he takes the shot doesn't knock him down power his way in pretty good blocking outside but it was all Adrian Peterson to some gaudy numbers in the first half rich pretty good blocking pretty incredible numbers 325 yards on the ground that's in one half <laughs> I mean, this that, that looks like a misprint <laughs> 325 rushing in the first half and now Youngstown State who has found a way to come from behind all year long 
is going to have to do it against a sky high Georgia Southern team. Andre Coleman. Coleman has come close to breaking a few returns. He's out to the 37. Let's check in with Don McPherson. Rich, we saw a lot of trap option in the first half from Georgia Southern, but what we're going to see in the second half is some triple option. What you're going to see is he'll fake the ball into the line to the fullback. The outside linebacker, the Sam linebacker right there is going to take the fullback. That's where Hill is looking. That's his read. If you let it go, Hill will then pull the ball and take it to the perimeter. That's the triple option. Each guy has a shot to carry the ball. And once again, on the perimeter, Georgia Southern is dangerous. Here comes Adrian Brown, and he's dangerous as well. Brown is out of bounds at the 25 yard line. And Jim Trestle going right back to what worked early for Youngstown State. Yeah, 36 yards on that carry. Remember the first two drives of the game? They got 149 yards and two touchdowns in 19 plays. And then after that, nothing. They go right back to what they did early. Brown inside. He worked his way to the outside to pick up the 36 yards. That's what they need to do. They got to have some patience. Brown now with 128 yards, which he's not the only Adrian over 100. Jeff Ryan with Ray in motion. Akpan. M.A. Akpan with the carry. Jason Neese made the stop. Well, you know, we talked about the early success that they had early on they were doing a nice job up front blocking and then you see that they got busy in the second quarter and the second half you see Georgia Southern getting busy getting up front getting off the blocks making plays at the line of scrimmage Jason Neese 213 pound sophomore becoming more active inside that's a thing a real key for them rich out of Powder Springs Georgia Ryan lots of time And it's incomplete. It was tipped. And Hosea Doby couldn't hold it. Great coverage by Georgia Southern. Oh, there it is. Giles trying to get open. And Kawaki Thomas was all over him. Not, you know, that's not a bad job as a corner. You got to look back and find the ball sometimes. Thomas did a nice job of maintaining contact to know where Giles was. Third down. Of five today. Ryan down. Corey Middlebrooks, fourth sack of the day for Georgia Southern. Yeah, the more that Georgia Southern gets Youngstown State into a wide open game, a spread game, the speed becomes a factor. Their linemen cannot block these guys on the perimeter, they're too fast. And the corners are doing such a great job of covering guys. There's no way Ryan can find guys open. It just doesn't have the time to do it. And these guys on the corner are really very good. And Jim Trestle is going to settle for three points or a shot at three points. Martin Griffith, who is 11 of 11 in the postseason. From 42 yards, he is 11 of 12 in the postseason. Well, since those first two drives, Youngstown State has really not been able to get much going, Rich. And Georgia Southern is on a roll. 38-14, back to Chattanooga after this. Georgia Southern gets the football for the first time in the second half. That man, Adrian Peterson, had an amazing first half. You can bet he'll be featured here in the second half. Hill will pitch Cunningham. He broke this one for a score in the first half, and he's broken this one, but not for a score. He's to the 30. Kawanza Swan made the stop. Uh, Don McPherson told you about the triple option. Great decision making once again by Hill. He recognizes that they take away the dive and he can't get it. Goes to the pitch. And then once again, Cunningham makes the big play on the outside. You see what Youngstown State is saying. They're saying, we're not going to let Peterson beat us inside again. We got to go stop the play up the gut. They can't take everything away, though. Peterson's first touch. Don McPherson, your thoughts on Greg Hill, because we've, we've focused so much on Adrian Peterson, but this quarterback, Greg Hill, 
has had a, a wonderful game, not only running the football, but also making decisions. He really has. He's done a masterful job. First of all, I think the Georgia Southern offensive coordinator has done a great job of calling plays. They run the trap option, then they run the triple option that you just saw, and this kid, Greg Hill, has done a tremendous job of making decisions. This time he'll keep it, and down he goes to the 28-yard line. How difficult an offense is this to run, this triple option? We see so little of it in the game today. Well, I think what's difficult about it is that it really is a disciplined offense. You really, when you practice this offense during the offseason, what teams like to do a lot is draw lines on a gym floor so that backs are running in their zone because this kid, Greg Hill, can't look for backs to make a handoff. He can't turn around and look for a back. He's got to reach that for that back, ride into the line of scrimmage, and make a decision. Well, I'll tell you, Matt, from a defensive perspective, you don't like seeing this offense because of the blocking on the perimeter, how they cut you up, and you don't know where the ball's going to be. Peterson on third down, and the Youngstown State Penguins have stopped Georgia Southern. At least it's a fourth down right now. You know, Donnie Mack talked about the way that you run that option and prepare and practice for it. Defensively, you really can't practice against it. You get your own teammates out there to run it. They don't run it the same way, with the same speed, the same intensity, and they don't cut block like the guys who really do it. So it makes it hard for you defensively to play this, this offense. Jim Trestle faced Indiana State this year in the gateway, the only team that ran an offense similar to this. And Georgia Southern is going to go for it on fourth down. And Peterson did not get it. He has stopped at the 21-yard line. So Youngstown State with a big stop, but they've got a long way to go to get out of this 38-14 to 14 hole. But what they need is patience. And the way they started their last drive was good for them. This is a big stop. You see they did a nice job up front of making sure they reestablished the line of scrimmage. Matt Meckling does a nice job up front. Todd Blackwell in there as well with the big play. But Meckling did a nice job of stuffing the guard in front of him to create the problem. Bob Tucker, their defensive coordinator. Now the Penguins with the football. Their own 21. Brown. He's met straight up by Freddie Pescada. I think what you're going to see Youngstown State have to go to is really throwing the ball a little bit more on first down. We talked about the fact they don't throw the ball short. Well, they're going to have to throw it short, I think, on first down a little bit, and then try and work Adrian Brown back in after that and be patient with their drive. Each year, Jim Tressel goes to either a college or a pro camp. This year, he went to the Buffalo Bills, and he picked up that five-receiver Doug Flutie offense. It's in their package. We might see it soon. I'm not sure it'll help them with this defense, though. Unless they can get Flutie along with it. Right. That's incomplete. Bill Ruggles couldn't hold it. And all of a sudden, it's third down. The problem with the Buffalo offense for this team is that Georgia Southern has those two corners. And, and they are incredibly good. They can take away the two best receivers that Youngstown State has. And then when you go inside, their inside guys, Arky Thompson and the like, are good. But that man, Moreland, is as good a corner as you're going to find at this level. And I can tell you this. I promise you, he will be drafted in the NFL. Not just on name alone. <laughs> Ryan throwing and it's incomplete flags go down yeah they're going to get Ryan Hatton for sticking his hand in there he had the left arm draped around the receiver and usually if you keep that left arm into the back of the receiver you don't grab the waist you won't get called for it Art Bellows with the call Interference. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, sometimes it's not really interfering with the receiver. You're trying to get some balance. And watch to the right side of your screen. Now watch the left arm. There's the left arm. He grabs him right there. You see that left arm? He uses that, wraps it around him. I don't think that really interferes with the receiver that much. It does give you some leverage, but that's contact, and they will call it when that hand is wrapped around the waist. They don't call it when you get it right in the middle of the back. 15-yard penalty, first down. Here comes a blitz. Ryan's in trouble. Boy, and down he goes. Back of the 24-yard line. It's a huge loss. Well, almost 15 yards. Jason Neese, Corey Middlebrooks in on the stop. Well, I hate to beat the dead horse, but speed, pal. You know, Florida A&M showed it against this team. 
and they had nine sacks. And this is exactly what you're getting from Georgia Southern. They've got the speed, Jamar Jones coming inside, and also Jason Neese getting in there making plays. And how about Dante Heron also getting in there as well? Five sacks for this Georgia Southern team. Second down and 23. Play clock has expired. Oh, they got the timeout in. Well, I don't know. I'm, I think I'd rather lose the five yards and keep the timeout. <laughs> it's second down and 23. <laughs> I agree with that one. Nine and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Jim Tressel and the Penguins are in some hot water. 38-14. Georgia Southern on top of Youngstown State. Jeff Ryan got the timeout, but the Penguins lose that timeout. They saved the five yards. A quick throw to Jared Zwick, the backup quarterback, who is also a, a wide receiver. It's a short pattern, but well too short of a shot at a first down. I think the point you made just before the break was well, well taken. You, you take the penalty, you know, because you burn up a timeout. You already had a second and 22 or 23, whatever it was. Five more yards isn't going to kill you. But you might need one of those timeouts in the fourth quarter if you mount a comeback. They have come back. Time in and time out. They did it last week against Florida AM. Third and 22. Ryan steps up. He will scramble. And down he goes at the 35 yard line. Pescada and Jason Neese made the stop. And really, I think the adjustment for Youngstown State the next time they get the ball is they've got to start throwing the ball on first down. Short passes, quick screens, something like that to take that, take advantage of that run defense that Georgia Southern is playing on first down. The skate has had a whale of a game. True freshman. Razo gets it off. Williams. Who broke one for a score in the first half. Not this time. Lost the football. Was he down? Apparently so. Youngstown States will not get it. Georgia Southern will hold on. We go to the sidelines of Don McPherson. Rich, five sacks for Georgia Southern, and Youngstown State is not getting the message. What they've been trying to do is trying to go with a deep drop to get the receivers downfield. In every one of these cases, Jeff Ryan is too deep. He's still looking for a man to throw to. Right here, he's still looking for a man. His guys haven't broken their routes. They need to go to a short passing game, keep him close to the line of scrimmage. Good points, Donnie. Hill's going to throw it. Incomplete. Dedrick Parham was open. Remember that man had a tough title game last year. One interception, two fumbles, seven turnovers as a team. Yeah. He vowed to get back to this game and to redeem himself from that poor performance. And so far, if Adrian Peterson were not on the team, that man would be the MVP. He had a great first half, came out strong in the second half. Flag down. Hill pitches it in time. Sherrard Freeman out to the 49 yard line, but this one might be coming back. Too many men in motion. Yeah, there was some confusion. Freeman was a guy who started in a little half motion and then stopped, and I think they had someone else moving at the same time. You know, this offense is so good. I'm sure people look at it and you go, well, why don't more teams use it? Well, there are a lot of reasons for that. One being that it's tough to get high school players who play the Division I or 1AA level who want to play pro say, I want to do the option deal. And let's watch the left side here. There's your movement right there initially, and then there should be double movement over there, which is your illegal motion. All right. But you know what I mean about the offense? It's hard to recruit for it. Craig Hill. Back at the 27-yard line. Well, I mean, you talk about Paul Johnson, who played, of course, under the legendary Irk Russell. 
two years as an offensive coordinator at Navy. When he was at Navy, Rod, they went eight and three in 96. Eight years as the offensive coordinator at Hawaii. That really was a, a nice time for Hawaii as well. They had success with that offense. Well, a lot of people have proven that you don't have to have the big offensive lineman. You don't have to have the big, strong quarterback to run this offense and be successful. But the problem is those guys think they're NFL players. They don't want to run this offense. Hill. He'll keep it out to the 34 yard line. That's not to say that a guy like Adrian Peterson doesn't have a, a future. Uh, absolutely. Running backs are running backs. Adrian Peterson will have to prove to people that he can catch the ball a little bit. They have to prove that he can block a little bit, but he's proving he can run that football. And I don't think Georgia Southern fits into the category of not having the athletes because sometimes you see a school say, we'll run this offense or an option type attack because we don't have the athletes. Georgia Southern has the athletes. Flags are down. I think that's what makes them so dominant at this level. Yeah, because you can have the scheme that you want, but speed will kill that scheme. And we've seen that today. The first punt by Georgia Southern today, but a penalty flag on the play. Right? Line to the step, a false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Well, this punt team is, is vastly underused. They're not, they're not used to this. It's their first one of the game. And they don't do a whole lot of it during this, this season. Well, he probably won't have a good punt. He's cold. Last time he warmed up, really, was uh, before the game, some two and a half, three hours ago. Well, you know what? If I were the punter, I'd think about transferring. <laughs> <laughs> this one at the 45-yard line. They're down at the 46. It's a good problem to have, obviously. Scott Shelton, the true freshman, with a pretty good kick there. And Georgia Southern in control. That's one mean-looking bird. 38-14, Georgia Southern. One mean-looking team today. On top of Youngstown State. And look what's happened since that second touchdown that they scored. Remember they had that fourth down, Rich? They went for it, and we said it could get the defense a lift. They've shut them out since then, really. On the throw, Renault Ray has the catch, and Ray is inside the 25. Ray is down to the 15-yard line. Jim Tressel knows a thing or two about streaks. Youngstown State has not lost a postseason game since 1992. They've won 15 wow. consecutive playoff games, and that streak is obviously in jeopardy right now. Ryan, little short pass, dumps it to Brown, and Adrian Brown makes the catch. Short of the first down, he's down close to the 13-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup. That's the adjustment that Donnie Mack and I have been talking about in this third quarter. They need to start throwing the short passes on first down. Now they're doing that. That'll give them a chance to get some control of the line of scrimmage and the ball game if they can do that. They can then run Brown behind that and start looking at points. And a no huddle look. Ryan. That one bounces off of Giles. Third down. Yeah, that's a pretty good matchup out there with Giles and Moreland. Moreland has been winning that battle most of the ball game. It's a pretty good one. Watch him. Inside technique does a good job getting his hands on the guys and staying right with him. Now he's finding the ball. That's pretty darn good coverage. He forced Giles to work real hard to try and make that catch. That's great coverage. Moreland, the senior out of Atlanta. Remember, Ryan's been sacked five times as well. Here comes a blitz. Ryan floats it incomplete into the end zone. Well, keep in mind that Ryan is a young quarterback. He is just a sophomore. And it's asking a lot of him to carry the burden here with this kind of pressure coming and two really good corners that can play man to man and then disguise the coverage and come up with some zone blitzes. They've made it real tough on that young man. Mark Griffith, who came up short from 42, now will attempt a 30-yarder. 
And this one is good. So Griffith gives Youngstown State some points here in the second half. 38-17 now with 4.47 left, third quarter. 347 yards, it's not a misprint in the first half for Georgia Southern, most of it on the ground. Youngstown State's defense has played pretty well here in the second half. That's the big plays that still have been an issue for them. They've done a good job in the second half. Remember the big play that Cunningham had? They managed to keep them from getting into the end zone with that, but still, a better effort by Youngstown State in the second half. You just wonder, though, if it really can hold up. You get the feeling that Georgia Southern can go back to their option, go back to the outside game with Hill, and still create some havoc. With the sense that they've kind of pulled it in a little bit right now. They're managing the clock. You know what I mean, Rich? 447 left, third quarter. There's still a lot of time left. Benny Cunningham slides in safely to the 34-yard line. I know you're a big fan of the playoff system. You like that in Division I AA, and you'd like to see it in Division I-A. Let me ask you this, though. We've got two teams playing their 15th game of the season. Mm -hmm. They've had a month of playoffs. Does that trouble you in any way, shape, or form? Would you cut the playoff system down some? You know, the, the man who crystallized it for me was the head coach of Marshall. Bobby Pruitt told us this year that to prepare for a bowl game, as you look at the national championships, to prepare for a bowl game, teams spend a month of practice leading into a bowl game. So he wasn't that concerned about that entire month run. It, he felt, having been through it as the head coach of Marshall and having been to a bowl game in the Division I level, he thought, hands down, it, it, no comparison, he wanted a playoff. I'm not buying that. I you can't you persuade don't. me that a month of bowl preparation is anything like a month of games. Right. But, it's not even close. But remember this, only two teams have gone for the entire month. Sure, but you've got a number of teams, at least, what is it, uh, another eight or so, mm -hmm. ten or so, that will be playing more than 11 games. Mm -hmm. And physically, that's a pretty demanding schedule for guys this age. Is that any more demanding than playing 13 games, which most Division I teams play that go to bowl games? I'm talking about teams that go through championship games in the, in the Big 12 or in the SEC? Oh, sure, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I have an issue with games that get be beyond 11 anyway, 11 or 12, but let's understand one thing. They have those because they aren't concerned about the players, they're concerned about the revenues coming. If people were concerned about the players, you wouldn't have 15 games, you wouldn't have 13 games. Greg Hill. Down he goes at the 31-yard line. And that'll be a first down for Georgia Southern. All right, Rod Gilmore has weighed in. Don McPherson, we've had this conversation a few times. Chime in on, on this, will you? Well, you know, the bottom line is revenue. The bowl games are not going to move their games up into December because they want the holiday audience. They want the people sitting down with, with the tryptophan uh, haze and, and watching football all day long. They're not going to move the bowl games up. And that's what runs Division I-A college football at the bowl game. Peterson. To the 20. Peterson, get out of my way. I'm going to score. Out of bounds at the one. And a flag down at the five. Uh, LeVar Green, I think, grabbed him by the face mask because he said, I'm not going to be on that highlight reel going out like that. I'll grab your face mask or something, but I'm not letting you do that to me. You don't want to appear in the highlight reel with Peterson. It's a bad thing if you're a defensive player. Watch the end of this run. Watch Green come over and try to stop the play. There he is. He's like, uh-uh, no, no, you're not pushing me out of the way. I'm grabbing the mask, anything to keep you from doing me like that. He's actually, I don't want to say it's a smart play, but it goes from first and goal from the three to first and goal to the one and a half. 205 now in county. He has never played a, a game in college in which he has not rushed for more than 100 yards. He is just amazing. We saw the 2,500 yards or so for rushing for the year. We said that can't be right. It is. There it is. And he's in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern.
It's bad enough, Rich, when you're looking at a guy coming at you that's 207, 210 pounds. He's had a big day. And he's running behind somebody 290 pounds. That's rough. Chambers will add the point. And Chambers adds the point. Georgia Southern behind that man, Adrian Peterson, on top, 45 to 17. Andre Coleman will return it from the seven. And Coleman is out to the 37 yard line. You look at the, these two coaches, you look at Jim Tressel, his team was ninth in the country, and here they are in a national championship game because they proved it on the field that right now, at this time, they're one of the two best teams in this division. Hottest teams. Well, hottest team. You name a sport where a champion is given to a team that just has a great regular season. No, I'm just saying that when you have this kind of a tournament that you're talking about, you are rewarding a team that is hot at that time that may win it. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But if you want the team that is the best over the long haul, you know, we're talking about the system we have right now. We've got that in Virginia Tech and Florida State at the Division I-A level. But don't you think there are other teams out there that are as good as those two? They may be as good, but I don't think you can make a persuasive argument that anybody ought to play in that game other than those two right now. All right. Well done, Counselor. 219 left in this one. Let's see if Youngstown State can mount a charge. Ryan throwing over the middle, and it's picked off. Arky Thompson. And Arky Thompson is back at the 40-yard line. That was a ball that Ryan never should have thrown. Thompson sitting back in center field. There he is right there. He's playing free. He just reads the quarterback's eyes. You see that? He looks back. He comes back. The ball hangs. He's in perfect position. That ball never should have been thrown. That was a gift. Thompson will gladly take it. And a long day gets longer for Youngstown State. Peterson straight ahead to the 38-yard line. Ian Dominelli made the stop. Youngstown State has had an incredible ride in the 90s. National championships, 91, 93, 94, 97. That man's had an incredible season. Dominelli leading the nation in tackles. Wins in the 90s. Marshall spent part of the 90s mm -hmm. in 1AA. That's right. And has had a great run in 1A. Greg Hill. In and out of the hands of Sherrard Freeman. I'm not sure I, I follow or understand the theory behind having Hill throw the ball there on a second down and eight. 121 to go into third quarter and the way their, their running game is gone. I thought they may go back with more of their trap option or some speed option or something to get away from the triple option, but throwing the ball just stops the clock. I don't understand that one right now. Third down and eight. Hill. Thrown short and incomplete, that stops the clock. And it's fourth down. Yeah, you know, you, you want to finish games. And when you run the ball as well as they do, you know, go ahead and mentally destroy the other team. You may not get the first down, you may not get the touchdown, but at least you'll take the 117 off the clock and you go to the fourth quarter. The other team looks up and they say, oh my goodness, it's 45-17 with only the fourth quarter to go. Finish it off. Scott Shelton is back out. Hey, 
is down at the 45-yard line. Yeah, see, Georgia Southern needs to be careful here. They've gotten sloppy in the last four or five plays here. You get sloppy, you lose your concentration, you think you have the game locked up, and then bang, two or three plays, and you're back in a dogfight. Didn't execute in the passing situation, and now just a drop snap on the punt. Hit him right in the helmet. And Paul Johnson is, I think, echoing your thoughts. Youngstown has been unable to capitalize. Adrian Brown to the 48. Jason Neese with the, the hit. Neese has made a lot of those hits today. Powder Springs, Georgia. Yeah, he's putting his face in there. That first drive, Neese was getting blocked by tackles and guards. Since that first or second drive, he's gotten off of those things, and he is planting his face in the face of Adrian Brown when he comes inside. Second six. Ryan. He has swallowed. Oh, how about Von Celius Allen? And digested by Eugene Phillips. Von Allen got the first shot. Sixth sack. And Allen has just been incredible. Remember, he was one of the guys, the first couple of series, Rich, he wasn't playing that well, getting driven off the ball a little bit. Since then, that first quarter, since then, Allen has been dominant inside, blasting through double teams and getting sacks. On to the fourth. Georgia Southern on an emotional high. The Eagles are 15 minutes from a national championship. Back after this. Davenport Field, Finley Stadium in Chattanooga. And those wearing the blue of Georgia Southern are having a pretty darn good time. Youngstown State down 45-17 as we start this fourth quarter. Jeff Ryan, who has been sacked six times. Going down to the sideline for Ray, and it's broken up. Great coverage by Earthwind Moreland. That's called keeping your head to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> you just won't stop, will no, you? the hits keep. All right, let's look at the two Adrians here. Adrian Brown, Adrian Peterson. Yeah, this is not bad, 133 yards. But this thing over here, that is sick. 208 yards through three quarters, almost 10 yards a carry, three touchdowns. Well, they said he was great. He's proven it. <laughs> he is. Fourth down. Anthony Razzo. This is Williams. And he goes down at the 20. Flags go down everywhere. Art Bellows and his Atlantic 10 crew have had a good game. And this will back Georgia Southern up. The pitch is to Peterson. There he goes. Okay, all right, the guy's good. He's good, he is the real thing, no question about it. Now remember, Earlier, we talked a little bit about Jerry Rice. When he was in Division I AA, he had great numbers. People looked at him and said, that can't be real. Is he that great? This guy is doing the same thing as a sophomore. There's a big hole that time. You saw the vision he had, the great speed, but watch how he continues to get yardage after contact. I think this man has a whole lot of stuff. Watch him deliver a blow here. Bang, right there. And then a little bit more at the end. Bang, right there. That's Walter Paytonist delivering a blow when they're about to hit you. Hill falls on the loose ball. He's the first sophomore to ever win the Walter Payton Award. And I think his numbers are so impressive. You know, they're so much like Jerry Rice as well. When Rice was in Division I AA that people will have to come look at him. That pro scouts will have to take into consideration and say, if he dominated that much, maybe this guy is really worth something on the NFL level. Before you call Mel Kuyper, he is a sophomore. So it's going to be a while before we see Adrian Peterson out Alachua, Florida. Just an average day, 241 yards, 11 and a half per carry. 
Well, Youngstown State should have known they were in trouble when they heard that he had the bad toe. The last time he had a problem in a ball game, 333 yards when he had the flu against UMass. Now he was on crutches, they say, on Thursday. I, I don't know if I'm buying that now. That's <laughs> I don't know. Don McPherson, your thoughts? Well, Rich, when you talk about Peterson going into the pros, there is one thing that the pros do look at. They look at the offense that you came from, the type of looks that you've seen. They're going to have to see this kid catch the ball, and they're going to have to see him play straight in the backfield from, from taking the ball from five yards. Right now, he lines up only about two and a half, three yards off the ball, so he's getting in the secondary very quickly. He's not seeing the ISO plays that he's going to see in the NFL. He's not catching the ball in the backfield. Those are skills, as you said, he's just a sophomore, and he'll have time to de de develop. Let me ask both. Well, I'll ask you after this play, and you talk about the type of offense that he runs. Greg Hill. And this is Edmund Coley who fills in for Adrian Peterson once in a while. If you're a pro scout, Rod or, or Don, and you come, so when you look at him in this offense, how, how do you project him? What, what are the skills or the, the certain things you look for to see if maybe he will fit in? Well, I think the things that Don mentioned are really key, and they'll get a chance when he's, you know, through his junior, senior year, whenever he finishes playing his college career, they will test him for catching the ball, for his blocking ability in the, in the All-Star games. Can he pick up the blitz and the like? But remember, remember the times when Oklahoma ran this offense, Billy Sims, same issues he came out, David Overstreet, Kenny King, all those guys. They did pretty well in the NFL. Yes, they did. This is Sherrard Freeman to the 33-yard line. Dwight Smiley made the stop. I think one thing that scouts will look at, and the, the assumption will be that as the dive back, and Don can talk about this as well, sometimes the holes are so wide open, you expect him to get through there. But what I like about Peterson is the way he finishes plays. You can't teach that. That's natural. Donnie? There, there's no question the way he finishes plays, but Rod, going back to your point about the type of offense and what the first guys will do, one of the first things they'll do with Peterson is sit him down in a room, diagram a defense, and say, how would you protect against the blitz? Where's your responsibility? They want to know that he can do more than what you see him doing right now. They want to know that he can see the defense, read it, and, and make the right decision in terms of who to pick up on the blitz protection. Yeah, well, that's going to be a long process. That's going to be a long process for him because the immediate answer might be, I take the pitch, right? You know? Exactly. But, but in watching him today, wouldn't it be a worthwhile process? It depends on what you want to spend on him. I mean, again, we're, we're way ahead of ourselves. He's only a sophomore. You know, he's got a long way to go. 22 carries, 248 yards. I think that's a record. Yeah, one double-A championship game record. Flag, it'll be a motion call, and Peterson, I think, sensing that, just goes down. David Vecchione made the stop. Well, that time he lined up not three and a half yards back of the, of the quarterback. He was back in an eye-back position and took the toss. That's something he would take in other kind of offensive systems outside of the option that you're seeing here today. So that was a more traditional look for him that you'd see in the NFL. Yeah, no question. That was more of the traditional look, and he flinched on that play, and what happened on that play was just what I was just talking about. There was a corner blitz, and he saw that out of the corner of his eye, and that's when he flinched when that corner started to make his move. Not something that he sees very often. Tony, any belly backs in your memory that have, have made the transition? Well, I think there are, there are a couple of backs in 1A who made the transition out of the, the, the option game. You talk about some of the guys in Army, Navy, Napoleon Kaufman was a guy who didn't really make that transition as well. But going back to the Oklahoma days, there are many. Uh, but nowadays, most of the Division 1A teams are running that kind of ISO offense. That one incomplete as Hill was looking for Andre Weathers. Well, Rich, I think, you know, since we're talking about Peterson, let, let me put my final thought on it. I don't think he's going to come out early. I think he's going to stay and play football, and I think if he talks to pro scouts, just what Donnie was saying, that's what they'll tell him. Son, you need to stick around. You need to show that you can block. You need to show that you can catch the ball. Maybe your offense will change a little bit, but those are the things that would be required, so I don't think there's any chance that he's going to wind up coming out early. Fourth down and five. Georgia Southern will go for it. And Hill will follow Peterson to the 13-yard line. Bruce Hightower made the stop for Youngstown State. 
you know, pretty good job up front with Scott and Bellingraf. Watch the, the right side of the screen there. See that huge hole right there? See how they just created that huge area? All Hill had to do was find it. Great blocking over there. Hill found the soft spot, picked up good yardage. Hill, I think, has something in his eye. And J.R. Revere, the sophomore quarterback, is on his way out. And he'll take this snap on first and 10 now from the 13. Revere to the 7. Tim Johnson made the stop. Revere this year with his limited playing time behind Hill, though he has run the ball for success. He sees uh, the mop-up duty, which for Georgia Southern can be, uh, <laughs> which can be quite substantial at times. Look at this. That just doesn't make any sense. 529 and rushing yards. You know, if you're the defensive coordinator, if you're a defensive player and people ask you what happened to the ball game, you don't talk about it. You, you just don't say anything. Oh, we lost. Yeah, it was a good game, 45-17. You don't want people to know that somebody blitzed you for over 500 yards rushing. That's just unheard of. Three different Georgia Southern runners are over 100 yards. Peterson in his 246. Benny Cunningham 129. And Hill now at 109. The pitch from Revere trying to get outside and in. Touchdown. Mark Myers. That's a huge celebration. Everybody's getting into the act for Georgia Southern. Myers not expected to get the ball much today. He gets a touchdown. And the Eagles will try to add the point and add to what has become a blowout. Chambers with a point. Georgia Southern won three national championships in the 80s. In 90, they got their fourth. And in 1999, it looks like their fifth is on the way. Georgia Southern up big. Georgia Southern to kick off. Greg Giannis on the return for Youngstown State. We talk about Georgia Southern and the way that they've dominated today. Look at the running game. Peterson, 248 yards, three touchdowns, and then two other guys over 100 yards that you mentioned earlier, Rich. Quarterback Hill with 109, and Cunningham at 129 came on four big carries. Giannis, the return man, is down. You saw the numbers by Peterson. Those a one double a championship record and with five hundred and thirty three rushing yards today Georgia Southern with a NCAA playoff rushing record as a team. Let's go down below to Don McPherson done it. Well, Rich, right now, Greg Hill is sitting on the bench and J.R. Revere is warming up. What happened to Greg Hill was on that last play when he scrambled, he landed on his face and the helmet ran into his, uh, knocked into his, into his eye. So he's having a little bit of trouble seeing, but if he goes back in right now, the head trainer is telling me that it would be a coach's decision, but right now he's sitting down and J.R. Revere is warming up. Giannios on his way off the field for Youngstown State. This is the, the time of the ball game where normally Revere does come in for Hill. Well, Revere inherits the job for next season because Hill will move on, graduating from Georgia Southern. And Revere is very much like Hill, very athletic quarterback. And so I'm sure they'd like to see him in the championship game and get some experience here for next season. Youngstown State with the football at their own 27.
Nine forty eight left in this championship game. Adrian Brown to the 31 yard line and Brown's performance has just been lost in the great performance by Peterson. Yep. Brown over 100 yards today and he's dominated the first quarter. Yeah, how about Adrian Brown at the next level. Well, you know, he's one of the guys that the NFL scouts are looking at. He probably projects better as a fullback than a tailback. You know, 137 yards today, a power guy, 235 pounds, can catch the ball. I think he's got a future. Second down. Ryan deep down the right side incomplete Andre Coleman was the intended receiver one thing we must note about one double a football it is a notch below division one the coaches from both sides told us though there's not that big a difference speed wise between division one and one double a which for skill guys I guess that's saying something well you've seen the NFL over the last several years take players who are defensive backs some outside linebackers receivers running back that that will happen where you don't find the same kind of players it's inside the tackles the guards defense alignment they're not as big as they are at the division 1a level here's the five receiver set Ryan to the 30 yard line of course scholarship limits a difference when you go from division one to one double a 65 scholarships at one double a mm -hmm. 85 scholarships at division one that means that you have to rely more on walk ons for your program. <laughs> on fourth down now, Youngstown State will punt it. You know, it is so difficult to recruit big time players to the one double A level when they know they aren't going to play against Tennessee, Nebraska, Ohio State, and those types of teams. But what happens a lot of times is a great athlete who slips through the cracks because of a high school injury or something like that ends up at a school like this and ends up in the NFL. Georgia Southern a 52 17 lead over Youngstown State the Division one double eight championship game and the Eagles are going to bring a couple guys off the sideline you can hear that ovation you see the bottom of your screen there. Adrian Peterson and Greg Hill on their way out and the Eagles will keep it on the ground. There's a look at two guys who have had a tremendous season and they have proved it in this championship game. Ian Dominelli the kid from Santa Barbara struggling to get to his feet. There's a look at at Peterson. That turf toe doesn't seem to be bothering him much at all, does it? No. Crutches or no crutches tonight, he'll be dancing a little bit. How long do you think it'll be before he calls Big Brother Michael at the Colts and says, hey, did you watch my ball game? Look at Revere. Look at Revere. J.R. Revere. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. I think the offense is in pretty good hands next season, Rich. <laughs> yeah, you take one guy out and you bring in another guy who is just as fast, just as athletic. And there seems to be a flag down. I'm not certain if that is for the, uh, the celebration afterwards or on the play. 45, Chris Chang, the extra point. Well, you know, as a coach, I would take that penalty. I have no problem with my guys finishing off a championship game and having a little bit of fun at the end here. If it's going to cost them a penalty at this point, so be it. I don't like the rule, but I wouldn't be upset about it here anyway. You're comfortable with a 58 17 lead is what you're saying. And how many times is a kid going to play in a championship game and run for a touchdown. Well, well if you're Peterson a whole lot. <laughs> I was about to say, you're Adrian Peterson three times today. <laughs> Chambers for the lengthy extra points turned into a 35 yard kick for him. And 
and he hits it. J.R. Revere, the sophomore out of LaGrange, Georgia. A little glimpse into the future, which is looking quite bright right now. Georgia Southern, 59-17. Fifty nine seventeen Georgia Southern on top. It wasn't quite Paul Revere's ride but it was close. The penguins are coming the yeah. penguins are coming. Something like that. Andre Coleman. And he's out to the twenty eight yard line. All right, saddle him up then. Yeah, J.R. Revere, tremendous run here. Watch him quarterback in the center, rides the option, and now he makes the, the notion. Good blocking right there, you see it, and inside speed again, speed again. Good blocking on the inside linebackers. The speed and vision of Revere does the rest. Georgia Southern's numbers. Revere already has got 80 there. You know, he didn't come to the ball game until late in the fourth quarter. Is the man he replaced Hill was over 100 at 112. Adrian Brown. Adrian Brown. To the 38 yard line. Hard to believe, but oh, two and a half hours ago, Youngstown State was in control of this ball game. They opened up a lot of power, knocking Georgia Southern around. Got their second touchdown, and then after that, Rich, it was all downhill. Georgia Southern figured out how to stop, stop them from running the ball, and that was pretty much it for them. Georgia Southern calls a timeout. We'll burn one of our own as well. Six and a half left in this championship game. Not a whole lot of excitement on the Youngstown State side of the field. Daddy, it was a dream, all a bad dream. <laughs> so wake up from this one and Youngstown State will get ready for next year. Adrian Brown on the carry. Michael Vetter has been our producer. Johnny Tyus, our director on a nice clean show in the one double a championship game that man will get his first ring as a head coach he was an assistant for Irk Russell for four years Paul Johnson in his third season twice he has been to the championship game and a little bit of redemption for last year's loss to UMass. Brown to the 49 yard line. 59-17. Not a bad run for Paul Johnson. And he's done it. Look at that record. 36 and 6 record in his three years. 42 points a game. He knows how to pour on the points. That scoring margin, 22 points a game. And some people question whether his team had played a tough enough schedule and whether they could really hang with this team from the Gateway Conference. Well, question answered, huh? Well, but remember, they don't have those computers in the. <laughs> <laughs> Down goes uh, Jeff Ryan. You are determined to get rid of the bowl championship series rankings and get that playoff in there. I think you can use the bowl championship series rankings as a as a mechanism for, right. okay. for starting a playoff. We've been there. See, I, I need Coach Godfrey. Where's Coach Godfrey when I need him? He'll be in Mobile. All right. We will be next week. We're going to gang up on you, pal. Mobile, the Mobile Bowl next Wednesday. <laughs> East Carolina. Texas Christian University. That's going to be fun. Ladanian Tomlinson is the leading rusher in the country. Not a lot of people know that. Well, I'll tell you what. If he puts on the kind of show next Wednesday that Adrian Peterson put on today, a whole lot of people will be talking about him. What a great story it's been for East Carolina as well. That uh, season with that uh, tremendous loss and the hurricane early in the year. They had some big wins beating Miami. Finished at nine and two. Wait till you see their quarterback, David Garrard. I oh, think, you're, I think he's you're hard to miss. Like, yeah. Big guy, good quarterback. I saw him in their, their opener. It's West Virginia. Caught.
Giles, and he's out of bounds at the nine yard line. Jeff Ryan, Boardman High School is where Ryan is from. The same high school that produced a, a Youngstown State booster by the name of Bernie Kosar. Mm, not bad. Well, Giles will beat the double zone this time. Short coverage and deep coverage. He gets in between it in the soft spot. You see he's wide open. Blown coverage once again by Georgia Southern. Giles has made a num number of circuit catches this year. Makes a nice one there. First and goal for Youngstown State. Ryan to the end zone, flags down, ball loose. They're going to flag Nate Gates, who was on the coverage. Renault, he, Renault Ray was the intended receiver. Well, you know, Ray's a big receiver. You know, he's 6'3", about 220. And you have to get leverage against a guy like that. Drake Cooper only goes at about six feet. Now watch again, you're going to see the left hand. Here he is working on the outside right here going inside He's got his hands on him and now the left hands behind holding on and the right hand he tries to get over and knock it out. I think that's pretty good play. Yeah but you got to let that happen. You know what though he yanked on the jersey when he made his break. Oh who's watching that. I uh, know you're not <laughs> a big guy like that you got to put your hands on him. Bellows was watching. Yeah, the, the yanking on the jersey, though, would have occurred before the ball was in the air, which would have been holding, not pass interference. This is what happens when you work with a lawyer. <laughs> First and goal. It's Brown. Well, and a practicing one at that. He's down close to the goal line. And a former defensive back at, well, that's at Stanford. They, I know. They you, call pass interference much too often, and they, they just don't let defensive guys play anymore. You see, McPherson, you see what I put up with for two years? And it's gotten to the point where all you do is say, if the receiver doesn't catch the ball, there must have been pass interference. Where's Toretto when I need him? <laughs> Straight ahead goes Adrian Brown. And Adrian Brown is into the end zone. Youngstown State sticks it in. And a proud group of fans that have come from Youngstown, Ohio. Just a tremendous program that Jim Tressel has built. That's, this team really had a tremendous season finishing second in their conference. And then went on a run, sort of destiny's child. He thought they couldn't get to this ball game. They won two games in the playoffs in the fourth quarter to get here. And they just ran out of luck and ran into one hot running back. They sure did. One hot offense. Mark Griffith. And Griffith adds the point. Adrian Brown, the senior out of Canton. A big day for him, but not big enough. 59-24, Georgia Southern, a few minutes away from their fifth national championship. And Jim Trussell certainly knows how that feels. Look at Paul Johnson, it'll be his first as a head coach, but the fifth as a program. Jim Trestle has won four national titles. You know, a lot of people have wondered, Rod, how come Jim Trestle has not accepted some of the head coaching offers at Division I that have been flashed his way? I think he likes what he's doing. He's the athletic director there, has a very successful program, a nice lifestyle. I don't see any reason why he should leave. And when we asked him that question this week, the first thing he talked about is living in Youngstown, the community means a lot to him. Yep. And uh, he really enjoys what he is doing right now at that school in that city. The grass is not always green. After the 35 yard line, Georgia Southern on the return. Basil Mack. J.R. Revere will hand it to Edmund Coley. Actually, not Coley, Mike Stewart getting the carry as 
Paul Johnson starts to get some reps from some of the guys that have been there all year. You know, even though this, this decade is ending and these two teams have dominated over the last several years, I don't think it necessarily is going to end. You look out with these teams being relatively young, they could be back vying for a championship in the next year or two. Revere. And that one is Mark Myers on the carry. A little extracurricular activity back there. The last time that Georgia Southern won a championship game was 19. 90. Raymond Gross was their quarterback. And Georgia Southern beat Nevada 36 to 13. It ended a tremendous run of four championships in six years. Not bad. Not a bad way to go. Irk Russell is the guy that was credited as a head coach of reviving the, the program at Georgia, Georgia Southern. He hired an assistant coach named Paul Johnson. And Johnson is back. He saw those numbers revere the carry he's out to the 47 yard line 59 points in a championship game being a, a record at this level and over 600 yards rushing that is just unheard of 600 yards rushing in a championship ball game and counting 621 now and this guy revere with a couple of more carries could very well get over 100 yards himself. He could be the fourth guy tonight on this one team to go for more than 100. To the 46-yard line is Stewart. J.R. Revere, the sophomore, will take over next year for Craig Hill. It will help that he can turn around and hand it off to Adrian Peterson. That will benefit the youngster. You know, if you had one guy that you'd like to have back, what do you think the odds are that he's going to be the preseason player of the year in one double A, Adrian Peterson? <laughs> well, he won the Walter Payton Award, so I think I think you're you're right on on that one. Stewart, yes. <laughs> Stewart at the 47, <laughs> and it'll be third down. And this guy, if he does. Anything remotely similar, he's just going to have a tremendous season next season. You know, you look at this, you, you wonder, can he keep topping these numbers? Well, no one's ever held him under 100 yards, Rod, in, in two seasons. This is number thir this is his 30th consecutive 100 yard sure. season. But, but you look at what he's done, you know, now what, 27, 2,800 yards this season. Next year, let's say he comes back and he runs for 2,000. Is that a bad year? No, it's a great year. But he is setting the bar so high, it's ridiculous. Stewart, the carry to the 35-yard line. Paul Johnson getting his uh, congratulations. A little bit of uh, Gatorade, I think, might be headed his direction. And Revere down to a knee. Paul Johnson would like to start another run like Georgia Southern had in the 80s. They started the 90s with a national championship. They finished the 90s with another title. Their fifth in one double A football. And the game ball is going to that guy, Adrian Peterson. He's got to wait till the clock expires. He's got the ball. He's got the championship. And Georgia Southern fans flood this field. 